like to welcome everybody here today and, and uh, again the Economic Development Committee meeting. And we have several uh, items that we need to uh, talk about, discuss. Uh, some uh, will be contractual matters, and we will probably uh, have some uh, legal advice from our, our uh, attorney. So at this time, I'd like to have a uh, motion that we go into the session. Second. Okay. All in favor? All right. so we'll probably be in the second session for 45 minutes or so, maybe. Yeah, we'll so far. <laughs>
development of a park in Chapin Court in the Chapin Quarter has been part of our long-term strategic plan. The public hearing tonight allows us to appropriate funding needed to develop such a park in that quarter so that economic development activity, similar to the level of activity cited above in the Sykes Scott Industrial Park, can occur. Mr. Chairman, members of the Council, thank you so much. Thank you very much, Chair. Okay, we have uh, made it easy to do nobody speaking in favor, except Chuck, I guess he just did. And uh, we have now 13 folks signed up to be composed, and we will start with Summer Solemn. 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 Yes, sir. Okay. I'll try to remember that. Okay. Um, I guess the points that I have to make mostly is, I guess, a question. Why Chapin? Um, unless things have changed, I don't think that Chapin actually needs economic development. My understanding is most of the people who live over in Chapin are fairly well off, and I don't understand why it needs to go over there. It's also far away from the interstates, the UPS and FedEx hubs, the airport, and so I'm wondering why it is that it's in Chapin. The land over there is far more expensive than it is in other areas of Lexington County, and so I'm just wondering why Chapin. Um, it, it can it not be in one of the other areas that are closer to these areas that are um, important for industry and that could be um, um, beneficial to areas where actually need economic development and who need the opportunity and need the employment and need the income. And so I guess that was my question is because I, I didn't, I guess I missed out on the, how this was decided where it was. Um, also, I uh, would like to make another point. I keep hearing about free money. This is just a, an addendum, I guess, to it. Um, when y'all get money, one second. The audience can't hear you. Would you get closer to the mic? Like this? Is this hey, better? Okay. Is that better? Is this better? <laughs> is that better? Okay. You're wasting some of your three minutes. Okay, sorry. There is no, when y'all get stuff, it is not free money. <laughs> Okay, it either comes from our wallets from the federal government or it comes from fees and tax of our fees and licenses that the business owners pass on to us. And so there is no such thing as free money. So if y'all would please, you know, <laughs> adjust your thinking, there is no such thing as free money. Thank you. Thank you. And I swear we didn't. I'm not going to be ugly. I was about to say we didn't know there wasn't any free money. We know there's no free money. Trust me. I said that earlier in yeah, not all of to it. the grant. Oh, a donation that those we new councilmen. Oh, that's came, right. That money came that from private there. sources of donation that we did not have to match. So to the county, that was free money. Okay, don't that's make me call you down. Don't so make sorry, me call you down. It came from a private donation that we got. So, anyway, so, sorry. You might have to go sit on that end. <laughs> I'm sorry. I apologize. But we should have fun here. William, now help me. Gabrowski? William Gabrowski? He has to leave. He Oh, good. <laughs> One down. Joanne Gabrowski, did he take her home with him? Yeah. Oh, good. I mean, I'm sorry. <laughs> Susan Jones. Susan left it. Time's ticking, Susan. I'm, I'm just kidding. I'm just, I'm just kidding. Give me your name and address, please, ma'am. Uh, Susan Jones, 1441 Old Chapin Road, Lexington. Oh, I was. Thank you. All right. Um, I would like for you to vote no on this. Um, I don't see that it's an emergency. My concern is that it's up in Chapin. The traffic on I-26 is horrible right now, especially coming around Harbison and the interchange between I-26 and I-20 is a mess and if you're going to put an industrial park up there you're going to get a lot more truck traffic which I think could be more of a hazard so I would like for you to vote no please thank you thank you and we'll try to answer that question yours and yours later uh, that was Susan okay Carl Jordan I know Carl's here Carl I got a cousin named Carl Jordan by the way just so you know I won't ever forget you <laughs> My name is Carl Jordan. I live at 145 Willow Drive, Lexington, South Carolina, 29072. 
I just want to start off really kind of telling you why this group is here. Uh, and the best thing it does it is a, we have to read about each time we come here and remind ourselves of a quote by Andrew Jackson that says, but you must remember, my fellow citizens, that eternal vigilance by the people is the price of liberty. It behooves you, therefore, to be watchful in your states as well as in the government. The reason why I'm opposing this 8 million is, frankly, I just don't have enough information on it. Now, like, uh, I asked for something uh, about two weeks ago, and only more information we have is the same thing that's in the uh, packet this time, was the same thing two weeks ago. Uh, Mr. Whipple there, he gave us uh, one or two points, but I just want to request from y'all to uh, you know, give us more information be more forthcoming with this information. Like, we're not up here on any one personal item. We just, we believe in limited government, and we believe in uh, preserving our liberties and freedom. That's what we're about. We don't have any specific acts to grind on anything. But so, I just say if you could be more transparent with us and tell us what's going on, we realize that in your executive session, you have to do some of that that kind of thing. We hope that you are complying with the Freedom of Information Act because we aren't in there to see what you are talking about. But uh, it, would, it would be helpful, I think, like on this item, like eight million, because it's increasing the budget by about eight percent. Is you know, if sometimes we ask questions, if you could get maybe a staff person to brief us or something like that, you know, that would help us out. And if you want to really understand where we come from, this is kind of our Bible our people's so, 5,000 year leap, the principles of freedom. Something that's really good, and so if you ever want to learn more about this, you know, let me know, I'll get you. All right, thank you. Thank you, Charles. And I can't read it, I'm sorry. That's okay. Well, tell me what it is. Uh, uh, Ann Banky. Banky. Yes. And your address, please. 15 uh, Mallard Shores Place, Lexington, 29072. Okay. And, um, I just had a couple of, quite, uh, couple of comments on this ordinance. This is the exact same thing that we saw two weeks ago when you voted it on the second time around. It has no new information in it, um, included in it. When we talked to y'all last two weeks ago, we wanted to know where this money is coming from. Still, have, we still don't know. We had some comments of where they thought they were coming from, but we still don't know where this is money is coming from. Um, I find out today that it's from Chapin. It's not explained in this ordinance. There's nothing in here except that you want more money to buy land for something. People of this county, when they go up and look in the agenda and they look at these ordinances, it, there's no explanation of what's this all about. Why isn't this money in your budget? Why is this outside of the budget? How come all of a sudden it's come up? The first reading, there was no mention of eight million in the title. It slipped right by us. We had no idea. First time we heard about it was two weeks ago. Still no information. Um, I think you need to vote this down. I think you need to. You can't vote on it tonight. You need to vote it on, on the next county council meeting. We'd like to see some more information. We just we don't have a good feeling. We don't feel like you're being transparent, and it just makes us feel like. Y'all think we're a bunch of peons. And you sit up there in your high dais and you act arrogant and you, you look down on us. We pay your salaries. You all work for us. And we often think that that's not how you feel. We get it. We have councilmen come up to us and say, well, where were you three years ago or five years ago when we talked about 13 million? Excuse me, I'm here today. It really upsets me that people who work for us treat us like peons. And I would appreciate it if you would remember that the taxpayers, you work for us, we don't work for you. And we do deserve a little bit more respect. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am. Diane, you, I think you better spell that for the clerk. Really? Yes, B -D in, in, the, in the mic. So oh, I'm sorry. B-U-D-Z-I-C-H-O-W-S-K-I. Thank you. Thank and you. the address? 401 Lidgate Drive, Columbia 29210. 
you should have married that name. <laughs> anyway, um, my name, as I've already said, my uh, representative is Brad Matthews. I live in Whitehall Subdivision, which as you probably all know has been around forever, 1,250 homes. Uh, I've lived there for 25 years. My home value has gone down, taxes have gone up, everything is as it is in the world today, as we know. So this $8 million, I assumed, was a surplus and that you all had this money and you needed something to spend it on. And so I got a little uh, upset about that and just need to know the particulars of what is so important. My first response is, of course, this is transparency, which we've spoken about, but I uh, primarily oppose this and want to know if you have this money, why won't my taxes go down in this type of um, environment? And if my taxes go down, I promise you all will be reelected. <laughs> David Wetzel. My name's David Wetzel, and I live at 171 Cannon Trail Road. Election in South Carolina, 29073. I'm against spending the $8 million for anything right now because we're basically in a down economy with hard times. There's a lot of people without jobs. There's, there's just, it's just too bad just to spend money. But what I really worry about <clears throat> is that I heard through the grapevine that this $8 million was we back to the word, free money. The taxpayers are not paying it because most of this money is coming from the property taxes that the power companies are paying. I don't know if that's true or not, but that's not free money because I promise you there's more rate payers than taxpayers in South Carolina than anywhere else in the country. So it's not anything as free money. And as you know, the power companies are a monopoly, so everything they pay out goes straight through and it goes straight to the ratepayer. They don't pay me anything. I was really mad when they talked about property taxes a couple of months ago and how scandalous such a great citizen paying the property taxes. I'm sorry, but those stockholders didn't pay. Doodly squat. All they did was pass it through to the ratepayer. And then another thing about picking shape, I. I think y'all are trying to compete with Orangeburg County. Orangeburg County has got the biggest joke in the state on economic development. You ever heard of an inland port with no, no barges or no ships? They put in the inland port, Jasper is, which they said in 2007 they was going to put it in. But it's going to be on railroad cars. I never heard of an inland port. Right? I still think they're the biggest joke in the world. But, but I don't think that we should spend these eight million dollars at this time. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Nicole Quinn. Hi, Nicole Quinn, uh, 435 Kaiser Road, Lexington, 29073. Um, earlier was mentioned this evening that we have a lot of people who are suffering economically, um, foreclosures, uh, people who can't afford to wash their cars, people who can't afford to get, cut their lawns. So it baffles me that if our, the state of our county is so bad that we have to consider addressing how we're going <coughs> to correct all these problems because people can't afford to do things and we're going to go and spend eight million dollars. It seems pretty contradictory to me. Um, also, I do not believe in public partnerships at all. We support less government. We've had a lot of government and increasingly have given more power to the governments locally, statewide, and federally, and it's not working. So we need to go the opposite direction. So public partnerships do not solve the problem and they violate equality under the law so I don't know where this money is coming from but I don't and I don't care about the location I care about the fact that we shouldn't be spending eight million dollars to begin with regardless for what kind of public partnership it is thank you thank you 
Calvert Black. I really wasn't going to say anything. I was just going to say I agree, but I heard a couple of things that need to be addressed, I think. I know that all of you are probably thinking of Give us your name and sorry, sorry, please, sir. Talbert Black, Jr., 234 Hermitage Road, Lexington, South Carolina, 972. Um, I know that all of you are probably thinking of this $8 million as an investment in the future, and it's going to bring more economic development into the county. And if it was in a uh, place like the city of Lexington or near the airport or around UPS or Amazon, that might be true, but it's in Chapin. Now, I, I work in Williston down in Barnwell County, and they built an economic, uh, uh, an industrial park that was really pretty out in the middle of nowhere. I don't know how much money they spent on it, but it was really nice. And they built it more than 10 years ago and it's still empty. Not a single company has moved into it. So this idea of if you build it, they will come, just doesn't work, especially when it's out. And sorry for anybody that lives in Chapin, in the middle of nowhere, as far as industrial things go. Now, I heard Mr. Whipper say earlier that in order to be competitive economically, we need to have ready to build places for companies to come into. But I suggest to you that that's not correct. If you want to be competitive economically, you need a lower tax structure for everybody, not just the big companies who are coming in. Then you'll see the small businesses that are already here flourish. You'll see them expand and hire more people. And as you know, our small businesses hire way more people than our large companies that come in in the aggregate. So I encourage you to vote no against this uh, $8 million for an industrial park in Chapin, as I understand. And remember, in order to make Lexington County competitive economically, give us lower taxes, not higher. Thank you. Thank you, Chairman. Okay, that wraps it up. If anybody's got anything they want to add, get it to the clerk by Friday, and it'll be in the minutes for council's consideration. So at this time, we'll close this public hearing. And gentlemen, I need a motion for us to move back in executive session. So moved. Second. All in favor? We've got two or three items to finish. Mm -hmm. I don't even remember now. It's been so long ago. And then we'll be done.